Okay. Uh, it is a good point to start with definition of pattern glare, and it is defined as the presence of perceptual distortion and discomfort in viewing repetitive stripe patterns. But what does it mean in real world? Not every image that we can find in everyday life are equally pleasant to look at. Here there are some examples, and football is not in, involved in pattern glare. And uh, maybe some person among you can find these images uncomfortable to stare. And what these images have in common is the presence of striped patterns. This is obvious. But these striped patterns uh, have the same characteristics of uh, spatial frequency and contrast. For a brief recap of spatial frequency and contrast, we will take advantage of this well-known graph. I, I'm sure that most of you know, already know it. The name of this uh, graph is campbell robson Contrast Sensitivity Function Chart. And it shows two physical quantities that are contrast and spatial frequency. Uh, we usually measure both of them as a threshold, and the letters can help in identify how we do it. But the big idea behind this graph is that everyone can just identify his contrast sensitivity in function of the spatial frequency. And this is my contrast sensitivity function. And what I want to, to notice that is there are several um, suggestions that maybe on higher or lower spatial frequency, we can have the peak of, of contrast sensitivity. But we have in the middle of spatial frequency, what is the, our peak of contrast sensitivity. And the images that we have seen before are in the same range of um, spatial frequency. So we can add now to definition that the, the spread striped patterns have, must be of spatial frequency of the mid-range, high contrast, and seen in binocular condition. So what is behind pattern glare? As you can see for, for the images, that's not a good quality, I'm sorry, uh, there is a strange strange, unusual activation of uh, primary visual cortex in seeing these kind of images, and particularly for images of spatial frequency of around three cycles per degree. Now, we know that we are already mo more sensitive to that kind of gratings, but maybe in pattern glare, the, this uh, sensitivity became susceptibility, so we are we have a strange response, an abnormal response, that has been identified as cortical RAPR excitability. I don't want to go too much in depth in this. But what, what are the outcomes of the, of the pattern glare? These are the most common symptoms, and uh, there are eye strain, headache, glare, photophobia, and illusion. While the first four are most pre pretty common in optometric practice, the presence of illusion is a clue for the presence of pattern glare and are on the basis of the pattern glare test. Uh, I prefer you to show it in an uh, old-fashioned way. This is pattern glare test. This is a four pages booklet. We, we have the instruction and three spatial frequency gratings. Okay, uh, from now on I will go um, in depth on this, but I want to warn you that the pattern two, this one, maybe you will see better later, uh, has been related to the development of seizure in uh, patients with photosensitive epilepsy and uh, nausea and dizziness in individuals with migraine. So if you are aware of this condition or just you are uncomfortable in seeing the images, please have the vertigates or avoid looking at it. Thank you. Okay, now. This is the pattern glare test stimuli. These are the pattern glare test stimuli. As you can see, we have three patterns of the same contrast, the same size, but different, different, different spatial frequency. And on the graph below, we see that we have the mid, so pattern two, is almost in the same uh, area of our peak of contrast sensitivity. Now, how can to carry out the test? 
the idea behind this test is to check the symptoms, the visual distortion that the patient could refer in looking at the, these patterns. So, uh, I'll give you an example. Okay, these are real values from a, a young girl. Okay, uh, the patient is asked for the presence of the perceptual, perceptual distortions that are listed there. So you can ask for color, for bending of the lines, blurring of the lines, some kind of shimmering or flickering, fading of the, li or the line or part of the line, and the presence of shadow be between the lines, among the lines. So this is a typical values for a patangular sensitive patient. Um, from normative values found by Evans and Stevenson, we can state that the patient uh, is, uh, is suffering from pattern glare if uh, he or she reports more than three distortion on pattern two, and or, uh, in this case we have both the criteria satisfied, uh, the amount of distortion reported for pattern two must be higher than the one on pattern, the, the ones on pattern three. And just a, a quick uh, in-depth in analysis. For pattern one, we know that is a control, so we expect to not have much um, distortion on it. For pattern two, we know, we know that it's designed to elicit the maximum response from the patient, so in patient with is susceptibility to pattern glare, we expect to have the highest number of distortion. And pattern three uh, is, a, is a combination of the distortion, as Conlon in 2001 reported, it's a combination between the optical factors and the neurological factors. But we are investigating now the neurological factors. So if you, we have more distortion on pattern two than in pattern three, maybe we, have a, we are facing a patient with pattern glare. But why we are interested in pattern glare is not just about stripes like those behind me, that maybe is annoying you, but pattern glare uh, is associated with reading. There are several studies that have, have identified the relation between pattern glare and the reading task. This relation is due to physical characteristic of the text, such as special frequency, duty cycles, contrast also. And as an English idiom says, a picture is worth a thousand words. And then I want to show you this image that maybe is more ex explicative than me. This similarity between the text and the stressful stripal patterns may make reading unpleasant because the onset of discomfort and distortion. So what we can do for pattern glare sensitive people. We can modify directly or indirectly the text by the use, the use of uh, uh, electrical um, computer, tablet. You can modify the text and the spacing directly or you can do it optically with a magnifier, for example. You can use a typoscope like the one we use in low vision patient. Or you can use the spectral filtering heads that by chance are the the treatment of choice for pattern glare, and how we can select the use of, special, uh, of spectral filtering heads. This is another kind of test, this is a Wilkins rate of reading test that is associated to pattern glare because probably you have to do it just after pattern glare test, just to know if the patient can benefit from spectral filtering heads. There is a brief demo, uh, you show this overlay, colored overlay on two boxes of text, and you ask the patient to refer which one is more comfortable to him. And after this, you ask him to read it, and you have to measure it. Uh, the, our list of the instruction, so uh, we, mm, we have to, re to record the numbers of words that he, can, he or she can read in a, in a, in a minute, okay, and report the errors that he or she report. And if we have an improvement of the reading rate that is more than 5%, maybe, maybe, uh, the patient will uh, use these spectral figuring ads that are um, covered, colored overlays just at home or at school to improve, to redu reduce the 
the symptoms and improve the, read, uh, the rate of reading. If the, the Wilkins rate of reading test is positive, you can supply directly intuitive overlays. But if the, there are some evidences that this, this apply uh, is working, you can go for a tinted lenses. And you can prefer one of these techniques for identifying which are the best filters to supply. There are trial of tinted lenses, and you can choose directly, okay? There is this very huge instrument, intuitive colorimeter, maybe there is no one in Italy, or you can just use computer software and modify the background uh, just behind the text. So, uh, the messages I want you to take home, butter glare is the presence of perceptual distortion and discomfort in viewing repetitive stride patterns. The pattern glare test, that one, indicates the accessibility to viewing mid-speech spatial frequency stribal patterns and possibly text passages. Wilkins rate of reading test can predict the efficacy of spectral filtering heads and intuitive overlays and tinted lenses can minimize visual annoyance in subject suffering for pattern glare. If you are interested in this uh, subject, uh, please visit poster session. There is a poster from me that uh, is on the same subject or you can mail me for any queries or questions. There is a poster, there is mail on poster, okay, if you're interested. Uh, if you are bored, uh, don't worry, I'm done. Thank you for your attention.